Welcome to the Cooper River Rediversion Project at St. Stephen's, South Carolina. Since 1985, this facility has served as a culmination of everything scientists, naturalists, and engineers have learned about the land, waterways, and wildlife of the Low Country, and as an example of responsible, environmentally conscious power generation. In the history of South Carolina settlement, there are many examples of humans changing and using the landscape to suit their needs. Early settlers dike streams, flooding the land to support rice plantations. They built dams to power grain mills, and they dug the Santee Canal to move their goods to markets between Charleston and Columbia, avoiding the tricky currents of the Santee River and the Atlantic coast. But changes like these often have unforeseen consequences, as we will learn today. Up until the 1930s, South Carolina's interior, barely an hour's drive from Charleston today, was a rugged, primitive place. Few homes had electricity, and there was little industry. Bringing these communities into the modern age required electricity generated by using and concentrating the natural flow of a river to turn hydroelectric turbines that produce power. The original Santee Cooper project involved damming the Santee River and the flow was diverted through a diversion canal uh, into Lake Moultrie and the water flowed to Lake Moultrie and then through the Pinopolis Dam through the hydros and into the Cooper River for hydroelectric generation. The diversion project provided the interior with electricity, navigation routes, and two beautiful lakes, Moultrie and Marion, but trouble was brewing downstream. What happened, you know, when the, uh, when the Wilson Dam was built, it diverted the entire Santee River over into the Cooper River. The problem arose with silting in the Charleston Harbor. Basically, the more flow you have coming into a, a harbor, you have all these suspended solids in that, in that water, and as they hit the harbor, particularly when you get to a high or a low tide and the water goes to a slack, that material falls out and it goes to the bottom of the, of the harbor and that starts to impede the shipping channels for the ships. It was the, the, the deepest problem that they had with, uh, with dredging in the entire world. You know, they were having trouble with not just removing the material but figuring out where to put the material and anything that would cause that to be more expensive or make that more difficult is a problem for our area. The government was struggling with how much money to continue to put into trying to keep the siltation out of Charleston Harbor and it was becoming so cost prohibitive that they were, they were actually talking about shutting down the harbor in the 60s. After years of study and debate, it was determined that the survival of Charleston Harbor would depend on reversing many of the effects of the original diversion project. This became known as rediversion. We are rediverting the water back into the Santee River. Uh, it's a canal that was built by the Corps of Engineers. It flows through the St. Stephen's facility and back into the Santee River. Uh, there's a major uh, earth moving effort, major structural effort here to get this uh, project in place. They designed the project. They were doing that in the 70s, you know. Finally, they, they pretty much completed that in 1983. And then the fishway was finally finished in 1985. The diversion project had also disrupted the historic migration routes of several species of anadromous fish, those that live in the ocean as adults but return to freshwater streams to spawn. The rediversion project, which included the construction of the St. Stephen fish lift, has greatly improved the situation. The fish lift is a critical component for maintaining the lake system. This facility is, has been described by uh, fisheries experts as the most important fish passage facility on the east coast of the United States. The lakes are famous for freshwater striped bass and their primary food source is the small fish that make their way through the fish lift. We pass more uh, shad and herring here at this facility than any other facility on the East Coast. So the fish lift is absolutely critical to maintaining a healthy fishery in the lake. In the 1930s, damming the rivers and creating the lakes had flooded thousands of acres of wildlife habitat. Rediversion enabled the shift from land-based habitat to aquatic habitat. There's over 13,000 acres that the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service manages and the Santee National Wildlife Refuge. It's primarily a waterfowl area, 
but it also serves many other purposes. There are several endangered and threatened species on the lake system, including the American bald eagle, that's making a strong comeback around the lake system. The original diversion had created the Jeffries Hydroelectric Station, whose power generation capacity would be reduced. The rediversion plan compensated for this as well. The agreement between the Corps of Engineers and Sandy Cooper allowed for that power generation to be generated at the St. Stephen's facility, and that way there was no loss of power by diverting the water. We have three generators, and each one of those generators is capable of generating 28,000 kilowatts of electricity. That's enough hydroelectric power for over 40,000 South Carolina homes and businesses. By every measure, cost savings, power generation, and environmental conservation, the St. Stephen Rediversion Project has been a success. Yeah, it was a complete success. Um, from, a, from a financial standpoint, the Rediversion Project saves the taxpayers 14 to 18 million dollars a year in reduced dredging costs. It also is a testament to the partnership between St. Cooper and the Corps of Engineers. And the Fish and Wildlife Service and uh, NOAA Fisheries and of course the South Carolina Department of Natural Resources. How we all work together to come up, come up with a solution that worked for all parties and was in the best interest of the public at large. We truly have the opportunity to make life better, not only for the citizens of South Carolina, but all of the other folks who enjoy our lake system. It's, in, it's really rewarding to be involved in something that can make quality of life better for all South Carolinians.